I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we're diving deeper into industrial foregoing, and we're creating ourselves the Mycelial Reactor. Well, and also harvesting wither farts. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now, jumping back into some more All The Mods 9, today is going to be kind of huge in not only power, but the cool factor. I really love industrial foregoing. And I really do love its late game power production. It is one of my favorite ways of actually setting up power and can produce over 25 million RF per tick, which is insane. Now, in order to actually get to that reactor in production, we are going to need to drain the wither of, you guessed it, ether gas, AKA the wither farts. And yes, you heard me correctly, wither farts. Uh, that's what I like to call it because it really does feel like that's what we're doing. Now, if you happen to see the episode where I did get into the industrial foregoing souls, we're gonna be doing a very similar method that you see here where I'm farming the warden. However, I don't actually have to heal the wither. It doesn't take damage, whereas the warden actually does because well, we're draining its life from it. Now you would think through all of these episodes that I've done so far that I would have lost inspiration by now, but no, 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 no. I still have tons of awesome ideas and I am incredibly inspired and I want to actually make this my prettiest wither gas farming setup ever. So I'm going to turn it into a wither fart collecting chandelier essentially. So you need a stasis chamber for this. And so when we go to set up this build, uh, the stasis chamber, if you note, has an area just like this. And this is going to be the stasis holding area just like we've set up many times before. Now I'm gonna grab some blocks here and let's go ahead and grab some wax, for example. And notice this is three blocks tall. So that's perfect. That is exactly the area that the wither is going to be held in right here. So this means that right above it is where we need to put our fluid laser that is going to actually collect from the wither. And this is gonna hold the wither. And it might be kind of scary, to have a wither inside of here that is reliant on your power network to keep it stasified. And I completely agree. It can be kind of scary, and there is always that possibility of this becoming unpowered and your wither getting out. So that is why I currently have it encased in tinted glass from Mob Grinding Utils. All of this is tinted glass. And that is going to mean that the wither, if it does get out of here somehow, let's say the power goes out and we do run into an issue, which I've had happen before, it still shouldn't get out and try to destroy anything. It will still be contained within the mob grinding utils glass. And also, I absolutely am one of the biggest fans of this glass. So it, it honestly fits. I'm using it everywhere. I'm using it here. I'm using it here. I'm using it here. I love it as a decoration piece on top of the functionality of it. Now to make this into a chandelier is where things get a little interesting. I'm not gonna place it directly connected to the center point. I'm actually gonna raise it all up all along the edges here. And we're gonna use more than four lasers. I have 12 lasers here. And I'm gonna place these a little bit higher, just like so. And then on the bottom, I'm actually gonna go down and I'm gonna place these completely removing the middle section from this. Um, and this should all fit within, uh, just like I've explained in several episodes that you can actually have these pretty much anywhere so long as the middle is within this bounding box. And so I'm gonna have this placed around 12 lasers firing on this thing to make it a little bit faster than default. And there we go. We now have the basis or the, uh, the sort of start of our chandelier that's going to be in here. Now to really make it look like a chandelier, I'm gonna use a couple of items. I'm gonna use illuminated rods and in rods. The combination of these two things should make this look phenomenal. So these illuminated rods are really, really beautiful, but if we take these illuminated rods and we get them all the way up to the top, we can actually start to add in rods into them. And this is where this starts to look really good. So I'm gonna place some in rods in between here like this, and now we have this sort of split up texture, and it also sparkles using the same effect that the lasers actually utilize. So this is going to look all good in combination with each other. And wouldn't you know it, after a couple of minutes later, I have created a chandelier out of what is essentially a tech infrastructure setup. Now to just simply spawn the wither in here. I say simply, because honestly, it's not too hard. Now, another thing I want to do before spawning in the wither is probably placing this in. This is the wither, wither Poss Death Muffler from Mob Grinding Utils. 
And this will just save us a huge headache of actually seeing the mob death bar um, and, and seeing the boss bar, which you probably don't want to see in a farm like this. So I'm going to place it right here and then you click it and that is going to hide the wither boss bar. Look at those shades. Now, one more thing, I went ahead and put an inner tank up here. So the fluid, the ether gas that this is going to produce goes up into this. So I just have my output set to push. And then we do need to put in a purple laser lens. Uh, the purple laser lens on the fluid drill is going to allow us to get ether gas. And thankfully it can be in any biome and we don't have to worry about the Y level. We just need our wither under here. And so let's go ahead and build this. And I think one of the best ways is to just build it sideways um, like this, possibly. Because um, building it up is not gonna happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and break these for right now. And we will just build it, making sure that the long part is on the bottom. And so if I've built this correctly like this, the wither should just spawn in. And it's now stasisified. Now the only thing we have to do is just power our lasers, and then this thing should start working. Also, we probably want to, with the wither sounds, definitely disable the ambient wither sounds. That will get incredibly annoying incredibly fast. But you've gotta admit, that is one of the coolest looking chandeliers I've ever seen. So now with this powered and everything, I think we should be good. I don't even know if it needs any upgrades as of right now, because this is going to just produce over time. And we really only need a little bit of ether gas, kind of, we're gonna need a lot of it later on when we go to craft the infinity nuke, which does require each infinity nuke two buckets worth of ether gas, and this does produce it pretty slowly. But for now, because we just had it set up, we're gonna use it to start producing that 25 million RF per tick using the mycelial generator, which for that, we just need to make the next tier casings in industrial four going, Finally getting to this point. This bad boy right here essentially unlocks every late game machine and storage option from the industrial foregoing mod. Now to get this ready for automation uh, and, be, and to be able to use it inside of our uh, dissolution chamber right here, I do have to get it hooked into my refined storage network. So I'm gonna send it into a jumbo tank, which is yet again, mob grinding utils. Oh man, just so many useful things in that mod. It's just a super simple tank that holds a thousand buckets of a fluid and it is super useful for this case. And I just simply need to pipe it there. So I'm gonna send that ether gas right into this and then I'm gonna tap into this storage. Instead of storing it directly in my refined storage inside of a fluid card, I like to just have them inside of tanks. So I get to simply just attach an external storage to this bad boy and switch it over to fluid mode and then just up the priority and we're good to go. So now all of this setup combined to allow us to make supreme machine frames and this is where things get to get a little fun because it's now time to set up that mycelial reactor. And this requires us to automate the production of all the items and things needed to run 16 generators. So if you remember the old school mod extra utilities back in the day, uh, what you say back in the day, but not too long ago, where we would automate 16 generators there to make a rainbow generator. This is essentially that mod. It's just, well, industrial foregoings version of it, which I honestly really enjoy too. Now I've started to craft all of the different generators that I'm gonna need and also the mycelial generators. And we see them all set up right here, ready to go. Now, I don't wanna put this in my base as much as I would love to have it here. It is actually kind of a mess because these generators do produce side effects where they are running. For example, this rocket one that I have in my hand, well, it will actually give you levitation when you're nearby it, which is not good. But I think the worst one has to go to, like the worst award has to go to the actual TNT one because it just produces non-stop explosions, which is just awful. Otherwise known as the explosive mycelial generator. Yeah, this one, this one is the reason I don't want it in my base. So where should I put this thing? And I was thinking hyperbox, and I haven't really touched on this too much, but a hyperbox is definitely a way that we can do this. And it is a very interesting kind of contraption. Uh, the fact that we can have it in our base and interact with it and have machines tucked inside tiny inside of this block and interact with the outside as if it was an input and output is honestly kind of powerful. And that could be also a place that we can store this so whenever we place it down and we click on a side, it will actually teleport us inside once we've created this. So this is going to be called, um, let's see, generator. And then 
by default, we should be fine. And we hit save and enter. And now we're inside of this hyper box. Um, so whenever we click on a side, for example, this side or this side, I think we came in from the green side. It will teleport us to that location. So for example, the blue side, it should teleport us to the blue side as they are linked to each other like this. So if I was to pipe an item into this blue side, and then I was also to put a pipe on this blue side, we should be able to technically pipe the items into this machine and then have the things output the other side. And this is pretty cool because you can have machines that could be pretty laggy in here. For example, like create stuff, right? And uh, then you could have them process in here so you don't have to deal with the FPS lag that create can cause sometimes with large setups. But I think what I wanna do is probably use this more or less like a way that we can just store this machine setup and we still won't interact with it from the outside unless refined storage cables work through it, which we'll find out. But outside of that, we should be able to handle this and keep everything compact and not cause the explosions in our base. Now, oddly enough, we were just standing on bedrock, but this bedrock, even though I think it might teleport you there, I don't think it will, uh, but I was hearing strange noises. So potentially this bedrock could also teleport you to that realm. So you probably wanna build a platform like I just did. And I'm actually gonna decorate the walls. Um, this, by the way, is inside of a singular chunk. So if we take a look, this is built directly into a single chunk. So it is a 15 by 15 cube instead of a 16 by 16, making it have even walls, or I guess you could say odd walls. Now I am gonna go through here and decorate it with sort of a similar theme that we have going on in the main base and uh, just use utilizing some lights because when we fill in the outside edges, we will not have any light in here. And so this is gonna make sure that it is also illuminated while still giving me access to the bottom. And I kind of want to see, can we put an RS cable into the bottom and access our RS network through this box? And yeah, this is very similar to the Compact's Dimensions mod, um, where the Compact's mod didn't actually have fully implemented access to the outside uh, of the block to be able to insert items and stuff. Um, this one actually does, which I, I really like that. So let's hope this kind of functionality continues because this is I, I think very, very powerful if we can actually hook RS into this. So let's see if this works. We're gonna place the cable onto the bottom and I'm noticing the cable is not connected right now, but I wonder, will it connect if I place this here? Um, now, is it connected? Cause this side has connected. So back in the other world, will this be connected to it? Acting as a pass-through, it has not. But that doesn't mean that it might not, it doesn't mean that it's not working. Um, we can go ahead and try this again. I mean, I had, I didn't have the highest of hopes that this was going to actually work, but let's go ahead and take a grid, for example, like a regular grid. Let's just do a crafting grid. And uh, let's see if we can place this on here. Is it accessible? It is not. Okay, so that my hopes there are gone, but we still should be able to pipe items. Look at me testing so you don't have to. <laughs> Ah, but it does work this way. So take a look at this. This is really, really cool, actually. So I have an exporter that is sending to the bottom here, and I'm exporting gray concrete. And now when I go inside the box, I can go down here and just simply place a chest directly on the aperture. And look at that. It is acting as a direct connection to this inner inventory right here. Now that's honestly pretty cool if we were using this as an import output system. Now for me, the real thing that I'm gonna need is just going to be a receiver. So I'm just gonna simply place a receiver right here, get our coordinates, get back, and then we will have access to our storage in here. Now I have all of my generators placed in here, as you can see, all 16 of them. Um, and so I'm gonna go over all of the ones that I think are a little bit more complicated to set up. Uh, because the majority of them, you simply just need to provide them with the ingredient that they, that they need. For example, this needs milk and is also going to need an item. And that can be easily done with a tank um, and just simply feeding it the milk, which I do have essence for, so that makes that quite easy. And then also using an exporter to send the item into it. And then that's really all it needs to be set up. But there are a couple of them that are a little bit more complicated than just that. For example, the potion generator. We're gonna have to set up a machine for the potion generator. 
Um, the Ender one's really easy. Explosive's easy. Frosty's easy. A lot of these are very easy. The Halitosis in this particular pack is very easy because um, our Ender Dragon um, from Hostile Neural Networks actually provides that material to us, which is just going to be the bottles of Dragon's Breath. Um, the Magma, that one's straightforward, just redstone and lava. Um, and the pink one, it just needs pink items, right, to be able to be sent to it. Nether Star is easy. Death is easy, just requiring rotten flesh. Uh, the Rocket one, that's one we're going to come back to. Um, this one is just items being sent to it, which is going to be those crimson-related items. Uh, the Metallurgic is going to get a fluid and also, um, like, iron ingots. And the Furnace one just gets coal. So... Yes, there are some of them in here that are going to be a little bit more difficult than others. Let's talk about, though, this one right here in particular, the disenchantment generator. So this is going to take an enchanted book and it's going to disenchant it, giving us the raw book back. And then we need to simply re-enchant it and send those books back into the machine to keep it running. Some enchants are better than others, but I think I have a very simple solution to this but it is going to require us to modify one of our mob farms. And now the mob farm that I want to kind of mess with is this one right here. Um, so let's go ahead and turn this off. And what I'm going to do instead of what we currently have set up is I'm actually going to use a mob crusher from Industrial Foregoing right here. And I'm going to use this to actually take out these mobs. Now, what this is going to do when this is happening, and if we fully upgrade this to make this a bit faster, this should be able to kill these mobs and turn... Uh, their drops into essence. So mobs will generate essence is what we want to do. And then we can actually get a trash can and we can probably just void these drops for now because in reality, we don't really need them anymore. So I should be able to set the output of the items and we're going to push them into the trash can. But the fluid, I actually want that to go into a tank. So let's go ahead and send the essence that this is producing and we're going to push that down into this tank. And then we just need a gate to put on here like so. And this should start taking out the mobs, um, especially once we get ourselves an upgrade in here. And uh, let's see, we also are going to need a processing upgrade. I don't know which one didn't go in here. I think it was the processing one. Yes, processing. So there we go. That's going to go incredibly fast. And notice these items are going to build up in there. But the main thing we're going to be producing is this liquid essence. And we need that to be sent back into the other dimension into an enchantment factory. Now, if everything is correct, we should be able to just use the enchantment factory to send books in. It is going to use a little bit of power and use this essence that we're building up. And then that right there should allow us to enchant a book. And hopefully it's fast enough um, with our current mob farm. It should potentially be. I'm noticing while I'm in here that I guess my mob farm's not running unless we're in the dimension. I have no idea what's going on there. Um, but we should see this essence number technically going up. Uh, okay, it is still working. It is still working. Um, and hopefully it's fast enough. Uh, so this has now filled up. And then this is, of course, going to fill up. Let's get some eyes on here just to make sure that the tank's capacity is a lot higher. There we go. So now it has higher capacity and pump rate. Um, so the big thing that I need here... Uh, it to set up is basically to input from the top. We're going to say pull, and then the output is going to send back into the top machine. So our output needs to be push into this machine. So to be able to create this loop for a single book, we'll then take the enchanted book from the bottom and we'll set that to pull. And then the output needs to push back into the machine. And so whenever we put a book in here in the enchantment factory and it enchants it, that then is going to just immediately send that book back and then it's going to start a countdown uh, and generate RF depending on how much uh, the enchants were kind of worth. I think it does a little bit of an evaluation of the enchants worth and then judges that time based on that. And then we just need to hope that this fills all the way back up to 32 before it can do another enchant operation. Um, and uh, yeah, then we should be good. This one has always been sort of a bottleneck as far as this goes, because unless you have some other alternative for enchanting, this one can be pretty tough. Now, you could use uh, your your old mob farms and take all of the enchanted gear that you get from that and sort of use that um, as a way you could actually split the enchants off of those gears with Industrial Foregoing. But this is honestly one of the best solutions um, outside of, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think this will work. Um, now, it's not processing right now, but 
We're going to have to come back to this and see if this is going to be enough essence. Now, the next one for complication is going to be the potion mycelial generator, but we can actually overcome this with modular routers quite easily. Believe it or not, even though it says potion generator, it can actually run off of water bottles. Um, so if I go ahead and put this glass bottle in here and we put this in, this is actually going to run for a few seconds, which is perfect. Just enough time for us to take the raw glass bottle back out and then to click it back onto a sink. And we can do this all with modular routers sort of acting in place of us. So let's first start off with our activation module. I just simply need it to right click on the down uh, from where it's located and then set a whitelist to only click these glass bottles so we don't end up with any kind of loop. So that way it's only gonna try and click these glass bottles. And once it does, it's going to turn that glass bottle that's in this inventory directly into a water filled bottle. Um, so let's go ahead and set up our puller and sender. This is going to send to this machine and pull out of the machine. So first of all, let's go ahead and pull from the machine first. Let that be our first operation. And that is going to whitelist from the up and it is going to try and only pull a glass bottle out. And then we need to send, but this time we're going to be sending a full bottle back into the machine. So in the sender module, it's from the up as well. We're going to whitelist and send a filled bottle. So the way this should look is we have a puller that's going to pull the empty bottle out and then it's going to click and fill it with uh, water. And then we're going to have the sender module that is going to then send that filled bottle back into the mycelial generator. And then the way modular routers works is it will continue to loop the modules from left to right. So you're, it's going to perform this action, then jump here and then jump here and continue looping over and over again, which if we go ahead and put the bottle in, we will see that this should in fact do exactly that and constantly keep a filled bucket of water in here or bottle of water inside of this inventory at all times. Now to go back to the slimy mycelial generator where we're going to need milk inside of this fluid container, an easy way to actually just generate milk that we can then pipe into this um, is to simply do this. So we have an exporter that's exporting the crafted buckets because we can craft them with essence. And then that is going to send that into a fluid tank from Ender.io, or sorry, mechanism. And then we're gonna empty this. So we're gonna put it in empty mode and that's gonna send a bucket here. And then we're gonna output that empty bucket back into our system. Um, and then whenever we have this set up, it looks a little bit like this. And we're gonna notice this is just going to continue to fill with fluid, which is great. Now back to the firework rocket one, like I mentioned, this one could be a little bit iffy. Um, whenever you do set up the crafting recipe for this, make sure it is the flight duration one one that you see right here. Um, and then go ahead and craft that flight duration one. That way you have it in your inventory. Now, this is where things get a little bit weird is sometimes this may or may not work. I've played, uh, depending on the pack, I've played packs where this didn't like to do this auto craft. So let's go ahead and put the rocket in there. The duration one we will put the craft and I just want to go ahead and run my cable to this one um, to see if this is going to craft them. Okay, good. I think that is crafting yet because we don't have any in our inventory. Perfect, and this is going to run. Um, so sometimes this could be a problem, like you said, but it looks like in this 120 version, oh, it's fantastic. It works just like a breeze. Now with all of these configured, basically set up with like, for example, rotten flesh in here, I have tons of rotten flesh, but I could also craft rotten flesh in many other different ways. Um, we should be good to go. Um, I have the rockets in here, making sure you have a crafting card in here, and you also have the ability to make these things. For example, using the mystical agriculture essence, which makes this whole setup so easy for 25 million RF per tick. Just keep that in mind how straight up simplistic this is to set up with really only like four machines being a little bit more obscure. And even this one, this one just really requires lava. So you can just put a tank here and uh, you don't even need to feed it redstone. It also works with just the lava, um, the pink and the dragon's breath, all of this stuff, super straightforward. So now that we have this, we simply just need to connect them all up and get them prepared to start running. And then we need to also set up point or nodes on top of these to make sure we can void all of the excess power that these generate, which we are going to need to do to be able to produce ultimate power. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now to set up your plugs, I already technically have excess power from our current system being sent to a trash can. And the way that you wanna do this is on your trash can node where you're actually voiding power, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your priority is set to a negative number. 
um, on that. That way, anything on the main network that you want powered will get powered first. And then if there's too much power coming in, that power will get sent elsewhere. Um, but on these, you can leave it just like this. So I'm gonna show you that example here in a little bit, but let's first get this hooked in to the main input network, which by the way, like I said, will end up voiding excess power. And then this is going to now continuously work. Um, and then to copy this onto all of our other flux plugs that we can have connected to these, we are going to use this little flux configurator, which is honestly so nice because we can shift right click to copy the settings that we just applied here. And then we just right click this to apply all of those network settings onto this machine. And uh, yes, sorry for the jump scare. That's the TNT generator. That's why I don't want this in my base. So yeah, um, you might say fair. That's 100% fair because it does knock you about. Let's go ahead and get it connected in though. But that is basically everything now running. And the only thing we need to do to actually get the 25 million RF is to place the actual mycelial generator into the middle of the room. So now with all of the chaos going on, all of the different effects that are just constantly bombarding me at the moment, uh, we should be able to now place in our mycelial reactor. And this is the only other part. So as soon as we place this in, we should see that this has now started to produce the power and we can see this right here, generating 25 million FE per tick. And then we just tap that into our current network, provide it with the power and making sure we bypass the limit to now see that we are now sending 25 million RF per tick out of here. Now this is chunk loaded and this is where I wanna show you how we're actually voiding our current power. So let's head over into our mechanism uh, area and the mechanism area in here, I do have a point that is voiding the power. And to put this in perspective, this is how much power we're currently voiding. So yes, all that we're generating is technically being voided. Um, and we could send it all elsewhere, uh, but for right now, this is all technically usable power because this current storage is now filled entirely to capacity, which technically we could upscale this, but I just feel like this is just simply a power buffer. So with that, we now have all of this power right here to work with over 38 million FE per tick available to do just about anything we want. And we're gonna need this power when we go to charge up a few things later on, like cells. So something to compare it to, this whole setup right here that we just went through a few episodes ago in mechanism, to set up the fusion reactor in our current configuration produces 20 million FE per tick. And so you be the judge, which one's actually easier to set up? The one from industrial foregoing to produce the 20 million or to uh, use the mechanism one here to produce the 20. I, I don't know, I I'm kind of iffy on that. This one required four episodes to get through. So I'm gonna say that uh, industrial is a much easier way of producing this power, but this one can go all the way up to 200 million FE per tick if we were to just simply change a few things. And also just to think, all of this is happening inside of this little box here. Now back inside this thing, technically this machine disenchantment uh, generator, like I said, is still the bottleneck in this particular setup. Um, but uh, really we would just need to start producing way more of the essence and then this would no longer be the, the case. So the best way to uh, make that faster is probably just increasing the spawn rates. And now that we have all the piglet charts and stuff, we can absolutely max out these spawners. Okay, yeah, I think this is, uh, that's that's more than enough. Um, <laughs> also, I did realize that the uh, the magma cubes, uh, they don't actually spawn. So they, they weren't spawning whenever I was gone. That's why I noticed a drop but now they are both set to the activation and should all work. So now really the only thing left to sort of do as far as industrial goes is we need to craft 18 of the infinity nukes. And uh, those recipes are a little bit janky, I would say in here, because you can't actually see the recipes for the infinity nuke when it's, for example, pinned or when it's in the quest book. But if you do jump over to the actual infinity nuke and you click on the first one, you will then be able to see the auto crafting recipe. And uh, from here, you will also notice that you can't see the recipe for the add-on range tier. I can't click on it, hit R or anything like that. Um, so you have to find that one in here and then we can create an auto craft for it. Um, and so you're gonna have to go through a little bit of jank to get there, but at the end of the day, this should craft these items. Um, and same for the infinity nuke, it's going to automatically request these items to create this. And that should allow us to technically generate them. So all we have to do is place them inside of our auto crafter here. 
that is connected directly to our dissolution chamber. And all of that crafting should just work. So let's go ahead and craft our first infinity nuke. And look, it is going to tell us that we don't have these range add-ons. And that's where we're going to have to manually craft up the 18 range add-ons first. And then it should technically say it has them. So yeah, like I said, a little bit of jankiness, but it's you can work through it. Now, it also doesn't appear like this is wanting to technically use the auto crafting. So I just took the ones that I actually crafted and placed it in here to see if that will now specifically say only use the ones that we have in crafting and not use some sort of special data. I have no idea why it's not wanting to do it, but if we can't go, yeah, that, that worked. <laughs> so yes, craft them first and then build your pattern with them. And then you can request all 18 of them. Now, I don't know if I have enough fluid built up just yet of the ether gas. I am missing, it looks like eight buckets worth. Um, so I can make at least a couple of them. Let's first just make one just to make sure it all works. And there it goes. So perfect. We now have the production of infinity nukes now ready to go. And that's ultimately the only thing that we really need. And that completely solves this problem right here of having the infinity nuke. We're also, however, going to need a wither builder. And that's very simple as well. Um, so it's just an auto craft. So wither builder and now that we have all of these resources and also able to make the supreme frame that's as simple as just requesting it like so so i got all of those things crafted up and i also crafted myself an extra infinity nuke now in my inventory it's not going to charge up but the way this works is we'll have an infinity nuke here and it goes through tiers depending on how much power you give it it is a way of infinitely storing power i guess um and you see right here the transfer limit i have it now set to 20 million and this should use 20 million to charge up, I think. And you notice it has already jumped up to tier epic and is about to jump up to even higher tiers, right? It goes up to legendary and so on and so forth. So even at the epic tier, it is preparing itself. Now, this does apparently take biofuel, which is another byproduct. Um, it's another product that you need to produce in this mod in order to sort of get this to work. But yeah, this thing is pretty ridiculous and will destroy your base if you do click it in your base. So uh, just just don't do that. But yeah, effectively, if you kept this in your hotbar or kept it in some sort of machine that was being powered, it could de definitely void power. It's already up to legendary tier. Now, I'm pretty sure you place it down and to activate it, you right click it with flint and steel and that will technically set it off. And if you want to pick it back up, I think you can just shift right click to pick it back up. But uh Whew, that thing, uh, that thing will destroy your computer because <laughs> uh, it'll essentially lag everything out as it breaks a huge area. But that explosion that you're probably wanting to see is going to have to wait until another episode. So I hope you guys really enjoyed today's episode. Hopefully you learned something new and hopefully you set up this reactor for yourself because this thing is insane. The amount of time and effort it just takes to set it up. It is fantastic. So guys, if you did enjoy, like I said, click that subscribe button, comment down below. Uh, what do you think of the infinity nuke and would you use it on your own base? <laughs> I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below. And it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode and that huge thanks is going to go out to modern fantasy thank you so much by the way for your amazing support and supporting me over on the discord and becoming a discord premium member supporting in one of the best ways possible thanks to all of my supporters i thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one and as always yet again thanks for watching bye